Hello everybody, my name is Sam K and I'd like to welcome you guys back to Tuesdays with K. Now today I'm reviewing this guy. This is the Pile PD Mike 58, another Sure SM58 ripoff. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to be perfectly honest and say that I'm going to be a little nicer this one. Why? Because Pile is not trying to mislead. There is no sign of SM58 anywhere on this microphone or on its packaging. This is the mic or the box that it comes in, the PD Mic 58. It's right there. So yes, while they are trying to knock off the sure, it is not a rip off of some sort. So I am going to be a little bit nicer to this microphone. However, I do have some legitimate grievances. I don't really understand why they call it the PD Mic 58 to try to knock off the Shure, but we'll get into that. And as always, I am running this into my DBX 286S so I can get clean gain. It is running into the Wave XLR. I do not have clip guard engaged. Running at 24 bit 48 kilohertz. I will add no kind of post processing. There's no pre processing effects, but I will add in limiter and post simply for ease of use. If you guys are interested, please feel free to check out the left-hand corner. It will have that information necessary. Let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. You're going to get the microphone. You get a XLR to quarter inch cable. And you get a warranty card. There's actually no documentation included with this, which I found interesting. It's the only sure knockoff to not include one. Now... You can actually pull up documentation on the internet, which is what I had to do for this review. Now, it is entirely possible that they just forgot to include mine. I would not be surprised, honestly. But looking at the frequency graph, because there's not a frequency response range listed, it looks like it is 30 hertz to 10 kilohertz, which is really interesting um that it only goes up to 10 kilohertz that would mean that it's literally cutting off like several major aspects in the human voice but with that being said let's talk about the build quality the build quality on this thing is absolutely terrible it's actually the worst of all the sure knockoffs despite the fact that i did say that i was going to be a little bit nicer this is actually like really bad it feels light it feels like a toy I feel like if I squeeze this thing or drop it once, it's going to absolutely break. I don't feel confident with this microphone. That being said, I do think that they actually have made it worse over the years. Whenever I initially had this, it was roughly the same weight as the Way mic. It was kind of there. It is definitely a lot lighter now. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my old version of the PD mic to compare it to. That ended up breaking a long time ago. All right, and I am now hand-holding the microphone, and I will go ahead and spin it around, give you guys an idea of what kind of polar pattern this is working with. It is, should be a cardioid polar pattern, and that should give you an idea of what the off-axis rejection and coloration sounds like. And, yeah, this is what it is of the Pile PD mic 58. Now talking to the side of it, now talking in the back of it. So let's go ahead and do a mic resonance test. So I'm going to tap on the body in the grill of the microphone, give you guys an idea of what kind of, uh, you know, resonance that would pick up if there is any. I won't lie, impressive pile. You're definitely up there with the way mic in terms of your resonance doesn't seem to be a whole lot if any so let's go ahead and do pop test so pop goes the weasel pippity pop pippity pop sue says he shows by seashore pop goes the weasel pippity pop pippity pop sue says he shows by seashore and i'm gonna go ahead and start passing it between my hands give you guys idea of how much handling noise this generates now if i call correctly it is actually pretty bad so let's go ahead and test that
And let's go ahead and do a background noise rejection test. I'm going to go ham on my keyboard here, give you guys an idea of how much of my voice and the keyboard noise it picks up by comparison. And just, yeah, let you guys listen. Now pressing on the WSD key, spacebar, R key, clicking that mouse, give you guys an idea of how much of my voice versus how much keyboard noise it's picking up. And lastly, I'm going to cup my hand around the head of the microphone to see what kind of frequency change that happens in order to emulate, uh, you know, singers and rappers that do that. All right, I am now cupping my hand over the top of the head of the microphone. Give you guys an idea of what it sounds like. This is super uncomfortable, by the way, whenever I have to do this, because you're literally just holding a grill. It is super uncomfortable because it's making impressions in your hand. So let me just give my final thoughts and conclusions. I know this one has been a lot faster. Uh, for whatever reason, I sped through those tests really quickly. My personal opinion is this. This microphone is the least egregious of them all. Now, that is not excusing it. It is still a shameless knockoff. However, it does try at the very least. Let's be clear here. This is a very bright microphone, so it has a very heavy top end, but it is not too fatiguing i after a while it would get fatiguing i had to think about that after a while it would get fatiguing but unlike these pieces of crap i don't feel like it is overtly piercing there is a lot of sizzle up at the top end but i don't feel like i would get fatigued for listening it to it for you know f two minutes or something. This is more, this would not be good for a story time channel, but you know, if you're doing a quick update, five, 10 minutes, I think it'd be perfectly fine for that. I don't think that it would be good for a live streamer unless they had some sort of live EQ. If you did have a EQ uh, that you usually use, I would recommend, uh, you know, cutting the treble a little bit on this microphone particularly around the, uh, you know, 10, like 8, 9, 10 kilohertz range, as that seems to be where it's very boosted. The mids are a little honky. They did speak out to me a little bit and seem to be a little bit forward, a little nasally. Uh, not super egregious again, but it is something I notated. The bottom end is actually somewhat impressive. Now, I notated that on both of these guys, that the bottom end was boomy and loose and out of control. This bottom end is actually pretty nice. It is not recessed, but it's also not super boomy and present. It is very full. This is a very bright microphone, as I said. It seems to uh, uh, try to offset its dynamic nature by having this super detailed, crisp high end, which is a thing that has been uh, coming up in some dynamic microphones. So, my legitimate grievance with this microphone is why is it even called the PD Mic 58? Pile, you could actually just... This is not a Sure design, by the way. Sure was kind of the first to come up with this form factor, but it has definitely become the more common, you know, stage type form factor. If it went the route of more of the bare neck of the choice microphone, don't put SM58 packaging on it. Went with a, I would, I do want to uh, give grievance to this grill as well, but went with a matte grill. Just that would just be a paint change, or maybe even a black grill. A black grill would be perfect, actually. And got rid of this thing around the neck and didn't try to make the internals look like it. You don't have to make it look like a Sure SM58 pile. If it's good, it'll sell. The Behringer XM8500 has been wildly successful simply because of its price. 
And this is a $26 microphone. It has gone up in price over the years. But this is a $26 microphone. I think it could be successful on its own. So with that being said, I will recommend this microphone to some people. I don't like that they're that they're knocking off the Shure SM58, but this is one of those cases where I'm going to give it a pass because they are not trying to mislead people. They are very obvious in the fact that this is not an SM58. It is a SM58 knockoff, and they own it, which, you know, good on them. So... I'm going to go ahead and give this one a pass. Link will be down in the description if you are interested in purchasing it. And if you are interested in purchasing it, you know, make sure to, you know, just be aware of what it is and just read, guys. I, I That was my part of my SM58 knockoff, uh, how to identify one of them is to, you know, do your research on it and make sure that you're making the right decision. But if you guys did enjoy this, please give it a big thumbs up. You want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Check out some content I create, including see at the end of this video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.